holiness. That's old school. Listen, (laughs) without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Now, some people have interpreted that in so many different ways, but I'm at the place now. I know that we're in the fourth quarter. I don't want to play around with with every every person's view. Well, I don't think that means that. Well, you can say what you want. I want to make sure I see Jesus. So y'all can keep playing with all these interpretations. you want. If he says holy, I, I have to do that. I want to see him. I don't have time for this. I always say this because we keep forgetting. We don't remember I said last week we all got a a, 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 a hidden expiration date on our back. Nobody here know. And, and the reason why we do the fuel connect before service, I'm, I'm, can I really tell you all why we do it? It's because I'm so happy I get to see you because there's going to be a day that we may not see you. And so since I got this time to give you a hug, I better do it now. That's why we do this time, because we keep thinking, oh, I'm going to see this person tomorrow. You know how many people died last night? Because we're unthankful. Oh, I'm going to show you what pride looks like. I expect to wake up tomorrow because I'm. It's like we don't even have a fear no more about eternal. We only have a fear that you're fragile, that your life is not in your hands. So the humble says, I know that. So let me stop acting a fool. (laughs) The humble says, I don't got time for this. I'm praying. If everybody else want to act a fool, I'm going to prayer. I'm talking to God because guess what? Um, I love everybody in this room. But as sure as I stand here, when I stand before Jesus, Jesus ain't going to be like, um, Jerome said that... um, you know, that he was going to give you two of his two of his graces to make it in. And, um, you know, and Sister Charlotte said that um, that, you know, he will be looking at me and said, what did I tell you to do? Yeah. I can't be like, well, you know, Lord, you know, my friends, they want to hang out on Saturday night. You know, and um, I didn't know if I wanted to go to prayer or not. He will be looking at me like, OK, um, where are your friends now? <laughs> what are you going to say? Those people you think got your back. When you stand before the Lord, you're not standing in line with them. It's you and him. And he's and and that's why I said we got to get back to this to this thing that, yes, I love everybody. But you got to the only part that you need to be selfish with is making sure you make it an end. That's the only selfish thing you can do is make sure you make it an end. So we call it ticket to eternity here. (laughs) Make sure you got your ticket to eternity. Who, how many ever in here know you got your ticket to eternity? I'm talking about that if right now we all just, if, with a snap of a finger, that we all just checked about here. How many of you know that absent with the body, you will be present with the Lord? That's called ticket to eternity. Now, if you're unsure, that is something you really want to go back home and be like, Lord, why am I unsure about this? I don't know what y- how y'all feel, but, um, you know, uh, you know, pride even show up when we go to the airport. You know, we, we go to the airport. The flight's supposed to leave at 10 and we get to the airport at 9. Because something in us feel like, oh, I'm going to make it. And you forget that there's something called a checkpoint. And sometimes them checkpoints be long. Me and my wife was going somewhere. Remember the one lady? Me and my wife went, was going somewhere and the lady was about to miss her. She was so, she had so much frustration, pride, the root to all frustration. She had so much frustration going on and the and the security wasn't slowing. They wasn't speeding for her. She was like, come on. And they were like, ma'am. But my flight is. About, they were like. And they, they were just still moving the, the machine all nice and slow. Boop, mm, checking for us. And she's like, and she's doing all this. She's doing all these jumping jacks and they were still going. What is that on the screen? And and three people will come around. They'd be looking at the screen. Um, that looked like it's a, uh, that looked like a toothbrush. Oh, okay. Well, what about the thing behind it? She was like, "Can y'all come on?" They were just like, "What? Well, let's move that back. Move that back one more." That lady was so frustrated. And I was to I was told my wife, and me and my wife got there like three hours early, and we was all at peace. And you know why we was at peace? We had our ticket, and we were what we called prepared. <laughs> we wasn't like the f- five foolish versions who at the last minute want to get oil. <laughs> and that's how a lot, that is a form of pride. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't get my oil today. Let me sleep in. That's a form of pride. Humble folks say, listen, every day I'm waking up with my oil. I'm waking up because um, I don't know. 
I don't know when it's coming. I don't know. So today could be the day. Tomorrow could be the day, y'all. It could be the day. And for those who are prepared to got their ticket, there's an excitement in us. And I can tell y'all right now, there's a huge difference when you know you're prepared and when you're not. Because back in the day, about 20, about 30, uh, about, yeah, 30 years ago, I had an experience. <laughs> My mom got saved. I was still kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know I, 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 was, I was using that, that term, Rochelle, uh, the Lord, I, I, the Lord still working on me, you know, you, you know, you know, that stage, you know, so that, that's the, that, that statement, <laughs> Kiana, you know that, you know that statement too, Kiana. <laughs> so that mean what, when you hear people say that, you know what they say, <laughs> I ain't ready. <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> I ain't ready to stop doing what I'm doing. And I was in that stage. I, I, I knew about the Lord, but I was kind of, you know, I, you know, I need to feel it a little bit, you know, you know, little, little, you know and all, everything was telling me you better get, get, you know, and one day I came home. And I saw my mom's car, it, and, and you know, she was in the car in the driveway, came in the back door, door was open, Jeremy, I swear to you, I, I, I have never, I have never felt so scared. In my, so I go in the house, hey, Ma, Ma, I hear the, the water running. <laughs> I have never, that was the scariest day of my life because I know my mother, she don't just leave doors open and stuff run. That is not her. So when I was calling her and then heard nothing, I went upstairs. I was like, OK, what is going? And I'm telling you, thank God she wasn't there to see it. But I remember we had this this like burgundy couch. I jumped on that couch on my knees. I said, please, Jesus, please, please, Lord, please. I hope you didn't come. Lord, please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And then my mother come walking in the house. What are you doing? And I'm, oh, my. I was, for some reason, I, that was the happiest that I ever felt seeing her. But even that was done with pride because I wasn't happy to see her because I loved her. So you see how pride we can do. So my mother was thinking, oh, my son is giving me a hug. But it was the hug was even prideful. You see how that thing is so sneaky. And, it, and so even in that, I didn't repent. So when once I knew she was safe. I got tired. Didn't change. Went right back to doing my foolishness. And that's how pride works. And so I'm telling you, so all the so that season of my life was the most frustrated season. I had more insecurity. I had more. I was comparing everybody. I wanted what everybody else had. I was always boasting and I was this because of pride. Now, look at this as we get ready to uh, finish this. He it says in verse three, without natural affection, meaning they go do stuff, but their heart ain't in it. People will say they love you, but they really don't. Truce breakers, meaning they go tell you I'm going to do this and they don't do it. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, angry, despisers of those that are good. Oh, Lord. So if you good, these prideful people ain't going to like you just because you're good. Verse four says traitors. <laughs> you tell your secrets and they take it and turn it against you. Heady, high minded. Uh Oh, this one is the hard one. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. So if they love pleasures more than they love God, that means they love the pride tree. So everything they going after that's called pleasure is connected to a pride tree. Because remember, when you see the pride tree, you go see Satan. When you see the humble tree, you go see God. And these people are like, I love this tree more than God. Hmm, kind of sound like what Eve did in the garden. I love what this tree can do for me more than what God told me not to do. And the devil knows that, and that's what has been messing us up. So let me close with this. He says in verse five, having now this is this is scary. Having a form of godliness. I swear to you. When, before I met my wife, 
I knew I was in the last days as a single man. And I looked at this scripture and I said, Lord, you mean to tell me these are our options? This is the characteristics of the of the people that we gonna be marrying. This is the culture of the last days. I said, God, you gonna have to sit. This person will have to literally fall from heaven, Sharice. I'm talking about fall from heaven with a sign saying, "I'm your wife." That's the only way I'm doing it. <laughs> I am yours. That's how. That's <laughs> that's my only way. Cause I'm like, I don't trust this stuff. <laughs> Nathan, look this way. I'm yours. That's the only way. <laughs> like, this is nuts. I don't trust. How many of y'all want to? Why? How many of you willing to take a risk when the Bible says they gonna have a form of godliness? Meaning, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Peeking out of one eye. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> Try to see if you look at to see if so they look this so you can see them lifting up their hands. You know, hallelujah. I hope she watch it. Hallelujah. I hope she see I'm ho hope she see hope she can hope she see I'm holy. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so so Kiana Lakia, y'all be y'all be y'all be good. Don't don't fall for that, don't fall for all them hand lifting and all that. Cause because the devil know how to lift up his hands, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. So, the, but the Bible is clear that this is going to be a pattern. This is why the humble God will give you the desires of your heart because the humble will say, Lord, I don't know how to pick them. I told God that I was so. People used to come to me. What about her? What about her? I, I went. I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm, gonna be, I'm just going to be transparent. Charlotte, I was so transparent with the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm going to be honest. I don't know how to pick them. I, I, that's exactly what I said to my prayer. I, I picked the crazy ones. <laughs> I did. I, because I don't want, because that pride, <laughs> pride, pride will make you pick from the pride tree. And from the, uh, and the people at the pride tree is narcissistic. They're self-centered. They, the, the people at the pride tree is in 2 Timothy 3. And so we go all and we get attracted to all these characteristics in Second Timothy, chapter three. Then we take this person and then we bring them before the altar and say, God, this is the person I'm marrying. And God is looking at us like, you know that I'm not near this pride tree. But Lord, but they look good. They look good. Lord, look. But he is six feet five, Lord. He's a six foot five double. <laughs> so, but, so that's why we keep getting duped because we have not humbled ourselves and said, you know what, Lord? So I was humble. I said, Lord, I don't know. Every time I lean to my own understanding, I always pick somebody that just something was missing. Uh, two screws or maybe three. <laughs> and then the Lord opens the door for me to go to this mission strip. Yes. Hey, hey, <laughs> think it. So when I met my wife, I was in such a place of humility because I ain't know nobody over there. So my heart was so humble because I didn't know nobody. Nobody knew that Nathan Salter here in America. So I'm sitting there. Did anybody know who I was? I was just a normal guy. And I'm sitting there walking around like, I don't know Spanish. I don't know how to speak this stuff. So I'm walking around like, Lord, I'm just, I'm just as quiet. And all of a sudden, God blessed me in my place of humility. It was because I was, guess, you want to know why he blessed me when I was over there, y'all? Because over there is where my humility tree was. <laughs> but when I was near my pride tree, I had the shakuikuis and the and the uh, <laughs> the ones that would take a knife and stab you. You know, they were all over <laughs> this. But, oh, but over here, <laughs> yeah, I know. But, but then God was like, "You have no idea what I want to bless you with." Sometimes I'll be. It, sometimes it's scary how amazing she is. It's scary. I'm like, she is, 
but it, those only come through the humility trees. So he resists these people and he let these folk make their own decisions. But the Humboldt, he's like, oh, I got to lead them because there's a scripture that says the humble he guides in his way. I pray this bless you guys tonight. Amen.